Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm hoping is going to be the day we're going to try to make our very first cut, our very first chip over here on the newly restored uh, New Haven Manufacturing Company planer uh, from the 1880s, 1890s, roughly time frame. Not exactly sure when it was made, but it was in that ballpark. So uh, I'll show you what I got set up over here. I have a, a big plate of steel here that I have just laying around the shop. And I said, you know what? Let's see if we can uh, see if we can plane it. I think it'll be a good candidate. Uh, the challenge was getting it mounted to the table. Uh, you really can't clamp it from the top because we're going to try to plane the whole surface. So what we've done, let me zoom in and I'll kind of show you what we've done here. And I've used some of my planer books that I've got to get some ideas on how to properly uh, clamp this down. So the cutting action is going to be pushing down and toward the front here. So basically what I've done is I've just put a couple of bolts down into the, the bed of the planer top here. And that gives me some stops that this is going to put up against. And to kind of clamp it in place, I, you know, I don't really have jaws that I can clamp like on a vise, but we're going to simulate that action. I put two more studs back here in the back and I've used some planer jacks to go from those to the work. So we're pressing everything up toward the front. And in essence, what we've got here is a modified vise. And I also put some clamps on the front here on the sides that will just help to keep this thing from uh, shifting side to side or cocking out one way or the other. Uh, I've put most of it up here in the front because that's really where most of the force is gonna be. If it's gonna cock out, it's probably gonna be up here. But that should prevent this from twisting on the bed. Uh, the nice thing about this setup is we've pretty much got clearance on the top. We can plane all the way around this and we should not hit anything. Um, so that is, uh, that is good. That is what we want. So hopefully this is going to work out just fine. They, um, they make some specialized uh, clamps and stuff for using on a planer. I need to try to source some of that stuff and find some of that stuff uh, so that I can have more options. You know, obviously if you got something you can clamp down to, it makes it a little bit easier, but because we're trying to do the entire face of the top of this, like I said, we can't clamp down directly on the top and we don't have any clamping surfaces around the edge to clamp down to. So we're just pushing it in all directions here. Now let's talk about the cutter that we're going to use and uh, what I've got here. This is actually a planer cutter uh, that was uh, given to me by a viewer. And the cool thing about this is, is that these tools that are in here are more or less indexable. Uh, this is uh, some examples of the different tools. They're basically forged out. They have serrations in the back that kind of help keep them from uh, slipping. And I've got multiple profiles of uh, different planer tools that you can use here. You can sharpen these. You can come in and uh, just kind of kiss off the fronts and the surfaces around there. And right now I've just kind of got a round one in here. This would just be kind of a general purpose one. Um, but there's a whole bunch of these different types of inserts. I just got an example here of some of the ones that you can plop in and out of these tools. Um, Actually, these inserts don't fit this tool. I've got another holder, but you kind of get the idea. And uh, we're going to give that a try. Like I said, this is dedicated planer tooling. This is what they would have used on planer back in the day. You can also just use high-speed steel and grind custom profiles. I've got a, a holder to hold high-speed steel as well. If uh, this gives me some trouble, I may switch over to that, but uh, that's the plan. So with a planer, you know, the work's going to come into the front of this kind of like it would a lathe tool. Uh, but of course, um, after the cut, it's going to have to drag back across. So like on a uh, shaper, we got a clapper box here that hinges up. So when it drags back across, that cutter's just gonna kind of pick up. It's not gonna be uh, cutting and then the gravity will feed it down and then it will just press up against the back of this uh, during the cut. So you'll see that cutter kind of moving up and down depending on what part of the stroke it's in. So um, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's see if we can make a cut. I should have plenty of clearance here with my cutter head uh, and I've got my stroke set pretty long. I'm actually going to let it go beyond the extremes here. I can fine tune that later on, but to start out with uh, where we're at here should be good. Turn things on. I'm 
gonna pull my cutter over here over my work. Well, my belt jumped off over here, and that's probably a sign that this belt is stretched and needs to be tightened up. I don't think I've tightened this one up since I put it on there. So uh, we're gonna find our lacing. And what I'll do is I'm gonna cut this belt about an inch shorter, and we should be good and tight then. Hopefully uh, it'll make a good cut. So uh, let me get that done. I got my belt cutter here, and like I said, we're just gonna snip off about an inch and get that cut and then we'll put some new lacing on there that's how much i cut off right there so i've got a card of the lacing here and we'll just uh figure out how much we need to cut off it looks like it needs to be right right there and we'll cut those off and then lace that belt together so we'll drop this down there's a little comb in the bottom there that properly spaces those uh little teeth we'll put a clip under the bottom that'll capture them in there take our belt put it in place but more there we go And we got new lacing a little bit shorter. Put it back on the machine. All right, so I'm just gonna kinda put that over the top belt. We'll go ahead and go through our shifting fork here. And I will put the belt back together. We'll take the pin, put back in there. That will put it together nice and good. And now what we will do is uh, let me get that around a little bit and we will put this belt back on. Just kind of pull it around the pulley here. It's gonna be real tight because I've cut a whole inch out, made that belt an inch shorter, but that's what we want. We want it to be good and tight. There we go. And that looks good. All right. So I think we are ready to fire back up again. Let me clean my table off first. So now let's fire it back up. <laughs> and now that belt comes off. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Well guys, part of the joy of working with flat belt machinery is uh, just this having to deal with these belts. Um, especially when you have new belts like these, they haven't been really ran very much. They tend to stretch a lot at first. They get looser. Uh, so I'm not surprised we're having to do this, but hopefully this will resolve our problems. And get back out of here. Let's see what happens. All right, guys, we are cutting still here. Making a little light pass. Uh, playing with things, kind of learning this machine as I go. Uh, it's working. Uh, 
shortening up my stroke just a little bit. All right, I've been playing with some adjustments here and uh, I've shortened my stroke a little bit more timely. And I've also increased the amount that it moves over in each pass. So the depth of cut is the same as it was before, but we are uh, taking a little bit wider cut now and uh, that seems to be cutting just fine. So I think what I'm gonna do is just let this cut all the way across. And uh, I'm going to be just kind of playing around with things and doing some tinkering uh, and just see how things go. Uh, I may get some oil and put on there too, a little cutting oil. That'll probably help. Of course, we get that rust off the top. It's going to help as well. That's turning a nice tip though there. Fine tuning. Well guys, this is the results of the very first pass and I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, that's a little rough. Uh, I'm fine tuning this as I go and there was a lot of rust on there. The oil kind of stained it a little bit. But uh, I'm thinking that uh, this cutter probably just needs to be sharpened and it will probably cut a little bit better than that. Uh, that's what I'm thinking anyway. I did not even touch up that cutter. I just put it in there and let it run. So I think what I'm going to do is change cutters all together, put a different one on here. And now that I've got a roughed uh, flat surface across here, I think I'm gonna do is put a planing tool on here that makes a, a fairly wide flat cut and see if we can kind of clean that up a little bit. Ah, it ain't gonna hurt to try, so uh, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, I'm gonna go grab a different cutter and probably go ahead and touch it up and sharpen it and we'll stick it on here and see what we can do. So I've uh, got another piece over here we're gonna try out on the planer. This is more of a real world job and uh, we're gonna give it a try. Um, changed my setup completely. Basically what this is is one of my 12 inch straight edge castings that uh, my buddy Clark Easterling over at Windy Hill Foundry has been uh, casting for me. We're gonna have these for sale hopefully real soon when he gets a little bit more of these in inventory where we'll have enough to sell. Right now we're just kind of building those up. But regardless, uh, this is one of the castings and. I want to machine it. I want to go ahead and get it uh, cut so that we can grind it and turn it into a usable tool. And to do it, I'm going to be using the, the metal planer. Um, I actually did one of these on a metal planer back last January, I think it was, on uh, Lance Baltzley's little uh, hydraulics uh, planer that he had. And uh, before we tore it down, it's actually being, being restored right now, but uh, we did try it out. And we're gonna try to do basically the same thing we did before. So I got my straight edge clamped down on a block of steel here that just kind of picks it up. Now, instead of planing across on this, we're gonna basically plane up and down. So instead of my feed feeding this carriage across, we can also feed it up and down right here. Pull this gear out where I can go back the other way. There we go. And uh, we're basically just gonna lock the piece left to right in one spot and we're just going to plane straight down. The other side is a 45 degree angle and what we can do is we can actually rotate the uh, cutter or this whole head 45 degrees and feed at that angle going down. We'll do that uh, as a second step after we do this. So I've gone to just using a high speed steel cutter and we're using one of these big Armstrong uh, planer tool holders. It's just using uh, this uh, tool holder down here. I think this is five eighths inch square high speed steel that I just quickly ground a cutter out of. So anyway, we're gonna try it out, see what she does on some cast iron. And uh, yeah, we'll go for long for the ride. Let's fire up. This 
Nice cutting. So we're taking a fairly coarse down feed here, but it's cutting real nice. Uh, cutting heavier on this end than down here. We're gonna have to make another pass uh, to get it cleaned up straight. But uh, so far, so good. I think we're about to the bottom. I'm going to pull my cutter back up to the top. I'm going to stop it right there. And what I want to do is I want to move in a little bit deeper now. And so I'm going to just move the cutter head over. I think I'm going to put a dial indicator on here so that I can see how far I'm moving. I don't want to take too much of a cut. I did, as we got toward the bottom of that cut, I, I, I made the step down where it wasn't quite as coarse and I'm probably gonna roll it down a little bit more just to get a little bit nicer finish there. That roughing finish is fine right now, but as we get closer in, I want to get a better finish than that. So let me make some adjustments and we'll do another pass. I'm gonna loosen this up. I have it tightened up on the back and I want to, I think I'm gonna, just move it about 25 thousandths. I really don't know what the right number is for this. See, that's coming toward me. I want to go the other way, but I think that'll be good. And I'm going to clamp this back down. It's going to take a little, a couple of extra thou there, no big deal. All right, let's fire back up. Take her for another ride. All right, so we're, um, I've shortened that stroke up considerably. It's making a much smoother finish in there now. And uh, still not cleaning up all the way out, but uh, probably could take a little bit deeper than 25 thou, but that's actually leaving a nice finish. So uh, we'll just continue on with this as we go. All right, we are uh, making another pass here on the bottom, and I've got a 50 thousandths of an inch depth of cut. I haven't really measured what my down step is, uh, my feed rate, uh, but I've got it fairly, fairly small per pass, leaving a really nice finish. I'm, uh, I'm actually really happy with how this is turning out on this cast iron. Uh, it's looking pretty good. So this will probably be my last pass on the bottom, and uh, then we'll set it up and cut that 45 degree angle going down the other side. So far, so good. I'm happy with it. The bottom is done. Now I want to come down and do this 45 degree uh, angle on the front. You can see I've got my whole head tilted back to 45 degrees so that it's moving in a 45 degree angle going in. Uh, I've got my cutter head tilted a little bit to give me good clearance when I come out. Uh, so all that looks good. Yeah, let's give it a try and see what happens here. Uh, should work just fine. Let's, uh, I'm going to start by just taking a real light pass. I don't, I'm always nervous on a first cut. You know, you might start off barely taking a cut over here, but by the time you get down here, you may be hogging it out. So I really just kind of like to do a first pass and then I can make an adjustment and know where I'm going and know that I'm not taking too much of a uh, bite out of there. So let's, uh, let's fire up and let it roll. Gonna be fine. Taking a pretty hefty pass in there, right on this end, but uh, seems to be handling it just fine. We'll let it roll on through there. I 
I am getting a little bit heavier on this end than what I want. I think I'll move my cutter out a little bit. I'm just gonna come back up to the top and we'll just move the cutter away from me. It's really hogging it off down there, a lot more than what I need. Let's see, wrong way. Fifty thousandths, and we should be good to make that cut, I believe. Tell you what. All right, let's go in. Fifty thousandths. Right there, and we'll take another pass. We're taking a 50 thousandths cut on this. Coming on down, it's pretty much cleaning up all the way across, although probably gonna take another pass just to make sure I get it down below uh, any hard surfaces there. The finish on this side going down over here is not quite as good as the finish was on the front side but I think it has to do with the uh, orientation of my cutter. Uh, it's gonna be fine though for what we're gonna be doing. Quite clean up down here. We're going to come back and finish that up. All right, we're going to make one more final pass on this. I think this will be the last pass anyway. And I think we'll be pretty much where we want to be. I don't know. I may take a light pass, see if I can get a better surface finish. But this is another 50,000 step. That's nice. So, we've got our part off the machine now, and uh, you know, I, my surface finish is not quite what I want it to be. I really think a lot of that has to do with my cutter. This surface actually turned out pretty good. Still, I think if I have a little bit larger radius uh, on that cutter, I think it'll work a little bit better. I've obviously got some fine tuning to do. I've noticed working on the machine that there's a few little odds and ends that I need to just kind of do a little bit of work on. I noticed my little ratchet pile over there is not quite working right. Just some tweaks. But uh, all in all, guys, I'm going to call this a success. Uh, we have made our first chips, and uh, I'm happy with the results. I mean, I think it's good. Again, coming right off the machine with no fine tuning or adjusting. Uh, we have got a working machine. So again, I think we have shown that the machine is working. I think we're successful in the restoration. Uh, things are not quite finished yet. Like I said, we got some fine tuning. Probably the biggest thing I've noticed is there's a little uh, spring-loaded ratchet paw right here. And it's not, the spring that's in there right now is a little bit too strong and it's not wanting to always uh, ratchet back, which I was having to give it a little bit of help over here. I need to source me a little bit uh, lighter spring to go in there. 
and hopefully we'll get that taken care of. Uh, a few other, other little odds and ends. I need to get my adapter up here made. We talked about it in a video before to raise and lower the crosshead. Uh, there's some lay wipers that go on the end of this and uh, I need to get those out. I've actually got them. I need to get them cleaned up, put felts in them, get those installed. Uh, there's actually some oil cups that hang on the ends of this thing to catch oil right now. The oil that's coming out of the waves is dripping down the floor. I'm going to have to have those remade, uh, recast. Clark, uh, my foundry guy's got those at the moment. And I don't know, I can't think of anything else right now. I'm sure there's a few little other small odds and ends that need to be done, but uh, all in all, I am stoked. I'm real happy. Uh, like I said, I've got some practicing to do with this machine, just getting to know it, uh, work on some cutter grinds, and just try to play around with some stuff. And I'm going to be doing that, you know, off and on over the next month or two. I know I've already had some people asking, hey, I got a south end lathe bed I want to send you to redo on the planer. Let's, let, let me get to know this machine a little bit better. Let me get to kind of work the kinks out of it. Uh, before I try to do a job like that. But I think at some point in the foreseeable future, it's very definite that we could potentially bring some jobs like that into the shop and uh, use this machine on it. Uh, yeah, it's, it seems to be working pretty good. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's going to be a wrap on this episode. Finally, after almost a little over two years, we've made our first cuts. Uh, and we've shown this machine is back up and running. And I, like I said, I'm tickled to death. Guys, uh, that is going to be a wrap. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments are appreciated. Hit the bell icon up yonder to get that notifications. Hopefully when uh, new videos are posted, YouTube's not always the greatest about doing that. But uh, anything you can do to help, make sure you get those notifications. I do appreciate it. And I appreciate it as always you guys watching these videos. And uh, with that, guys, we'll sign off. Catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.